specific you wanted to look at with Sheik, or is it just literally like you want me to throw knowledge at you and you know you kind <laughs> well, of absorb it yeah, all in? <laughs> throw knowledge at me, but mostly like the fundamentals of the matchup. Like I said before, is like uh, it's like I understand like some of the basic mix-ups, like you know, because like I can beat like the lower level Sheiks and stuff. You mm-hmm. know, the ones that just spam like dash tech, down smash, or like run off air and stuff. Yeah. Um. And then, you know, I'm, like, aware of, like, CC percents and, like, all that. But usually my game plan against Sheik is just to rack up damage uh, to get him out of CC percent. And then, mm-hmm. like, uh, just, like, play safe around their aerials because that's all they really do is, you know, yeah. throw out safe shit. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, okay. Uh, I think it's just going to be best if we just start watching VODs then and then, you know, ideas will sort of pop into both of our heads. Um I guess the easiest way is just if you if you say when you want to pause it, like if you see something interesting and you want to talk about it, um, okay. or like I can do the same. Um, trying to find yeah, as this set I think is probably one of the better ones from Mango's side. So uh, can you see? Okay. Uh yeah. Cool. Yeah, so he actually wins this one uh, 3-0, which I think is... I'm pretty sure it's one of the only times he's 3-0'd Far- um, played with Farco as well. Was this in yeah. pools? Yeah, this is pools. Um, they, they actually played a, like, every, <laughs> a, like, a lot of summits, so it was kind of tricky to remember which one exactly this was. Um, um, yeah, so first of all, I will say... Um, mitigating like little hits like this that she gets is pretty important um you never want to let her like get damage for free at low percent really um well, obviously this is a mix-up because um you know he could have stayed on the platform and then mango gets to get under him but just keeping in mind that like you want to like that's Sheik's whole game at low percent is to try and get chip damage on you and then you know sort of unlock her other moves mm-hmm. um so keeping that in mind and not taking too many of these risks, like it, it can it can feel like it's not, um, you know, that big of a deal. Like oh, you got back end and it's fine, but if you let that happen every single stock, like it's just easy for Sheik to get more valuable openings on you after. All right. Um, what do you think about um laser heights in this matchup? Um. I think low is good when she's on the ground, and then uh, high when she's in the air. <laughs> it's the first pretty standard. Yeah, it's pretty standard. The, like, I don't know, sometimes it can be a bit more complicated, but um, yeah, like on the ground, you only really have to, have to worry about dash attack and uh, boost grab. Um, and then if she does jump, you usually have time to move out of the way. Um and then, yeah, when she's on the platforms, like, you want to just hit her running off or jumping off or whatever. Um, a lot of the time, I don't think it's that good to specifically shoot high to catch her jumping, unless it's, like, she's throwing out early nares, and then it's really easy to sort of laser that height, right? Because mm-hmm. um, a lot of the time, her jump, like, puts her in a in the ball, sort of, and it's really hard to laser that, uh, like, cheeks hurt box. Um yeah. Um, I like Mango's spacing and like his option cover, um, like option selection here. So he lands quite close with the laser, and then he goes for this like mid height nair that crosses up. Um, and this is just like really good if she jumps because it'll hit her out of the air. Um, it's close enough to stuff if she tries to do like take laser f tilt. Um, and if she shields, like it's still safe because he's crossing up right. Yeah. Um, so this so this is like a really good option to do when you're close range to Sheik off of a laser because she can't really do much about it. Um, a lot of the time she just has to hold shield and like play a mix up after. Um, so going for stuff like that's really good. Yeah, so he plays this like close range situation again really well. So he lasers close and then baits out the crab. Uh, and he goes for down air this time specifically because Sheik's taken like two aerials now, so she's now at the percent where down air will like confirm, um, like even high down air will confirm. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Yeah, honestly, just a big part of the matchup is seeing how they play these like close range interactions. Um, a lot of people like spam F tilt because it's like quite easy to do and it's high reward. Um, so getting good at knowing when you can sort of stuff their startup and when you have to sort of move out of the way and then whiff punish it. Uh, is How important. do you recommend uh, closing the gap and stuff? Because when I played, I know Dreffen's kind of special, but he like <laughs> he's kind of can- he's kind of campy. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, I remember when I played him, it was like the first stock. He was aggressive, and you know I felt like that was fine. But then he just started camping me in the corner, and I didn't really feel like I could close the gap efficiently without taking a ton of percent. Yeah. Um... I mean, I think Mango's pretty good at closing the gap, so you can see a few of the things he does. Like, right off the bat, he does run forward and then hold, uh, like, crouches, holds down. Um, and, like, see, even though he gets hit, like, it is important for Sheets to get chip damage, but he also isn't getting, like, you know, grabbed or anything for that. Um, and then he does lots of, like, these chase down lasers as well. Um, you see how he did, like, a half laser as well, so it's space around, like, Sheik throwing out an attack. Yeah, and it also uh, spaces him for the dash back as well. Yeah, if you, yeah. If you was closer, you might have gotten out, just like shield grabbed or something. Yeah, so one common problem is like people move too far forward when the, with their lasers when they're trying to chase down, and then they just get slapped in the face or forward tilted or something like that. Um, so yeah, it's important to take pay attention to like uh, how far forward Mango is moving. Yeah, so like here again, he does his laser like outside. He does mess up barely. But you see the idea is that he does laser and then half laser. Try to get outside yeah. the F-tilt and then he's like sort of in. By half laser, do you mean like just like drifting forward and then lasering? Or Because that's what it looked like he ca- Well, I guess he did dash a little bit. Yeah, so um, he dashes forward uh, and jumps and then pulls back on the stick. So that he doesn't go all the way with the dash jump laser. Okay. What um, do you think of like uh, just drift drift lasers? Like no no momentum. Yeah, I think they can be good too. Um, it's just the this like half approach laser just moves you more forward. Um, I think it's very like depends a lot on the context, like how you want to do the laser. Like sometimes the one you describe would be better, say if Mango was already closer and you just wanted to inch forward a bit. Whereas here, he wants to take a bit of space, but not all of it, you know? Okay. Um, so, yeah, it's not just as simple as, like, you know, always do half approach laser, always do full approach, or always do these little, like, drift forward ones. It's, it's very, like, case-by-case -case basis. But the general rule is just, like, spacing outside of them, throwing out an attack. Um, mm -hmm. And then, yeah, you just kind of go from there. Uh, it's quite useful to learn um, down tilt percents as well um, versus Sheik. I think I actually have a uh, Google Doc somewhere with them all in. Yeah, um, I think I, I think uh, Micro Melee guy did that as well. Yeah, from what I remember, his percent well, his percents are a bit different to mine, so I'm not sure who was in the wrong there. But but yeah, just having like a general feel for when they'll kill. Um, like for instance, this would kill on Battlefield but not on Dreamland. Um, well, maybe that with that DI I would have killed, but um, but yeah, you get you get my point of like if you have a guaranteed kill setup, you should like learn when it when it can be used. You know, um, do you think he would have had time to get on the other side of uh, Sheik there to do the uh, down tilt because of the trajectory of down tilt? Might have killed earlier. I don't think he had time unless he did like a ledge dash, but then you give up. Um, like Sheik could start going to the ledge. Right. Since you have to you ledge dash to, like preemptively. Yeah. Um. That's pretty good DI actually. Yeah, he SDI'd up. Yeah, so he so if um if Flip does down smash he's DIing he's doing survival DI and if he F tells then he has to land on the platform, which is really cool. Yeah, and then this is where it sometimes goes wrong to Mango. So you see how he's doing like a lot of these like trades when Cheek's in the air. And then he yeah. just gets like counter hit. So you wanna it's the same with as with like Peach really, where you wanna be really careful how you hit 
she cut low percent um because yeah she can just do stuff like this yeah so kind of just chip her away until she gets up to like those mid percents yeah chip her away or look for like stronger openings like late down air or wave dash back shine or grabs or stuff like that instead of like like that back of the mango dip would be good if she was at like 50 or 60 um but not when she's at like zero right it's pretty hard call out from um plop um doing like these higher bees are really good versus sheik as well because it does force her to do this because a lot of sheiks like to just sort of stay on stage and throw needles or try and you know like f tilt angles and stuff um mm -hmm. so doing higher bees where it gives you like the the chance to mix up between your angles is really good but of course you know this is the danger of it where she can go out and read you but then that's when you can start doing like the side views and stuff like that so probably just do it until they start respecting it yeah because like the whole point is you want them to start taking a risk which is like jumping off stage to try and hit you um i'm surprised that didn't kill actually yeah. Yeah, he was at one two four. So from my understanding it kills at one two nine on DI on like perfect DI. So that's like the sort of situation where it matters, right? Like this could have gone the other way and then you know, she could get back back throw Falco <laughs> or like a down throw. Um Do you ever opt for like a DI mix up with like a run like a like a back air here? Like you run through them? Yeah. Back air? So I would um at this percent I would back air. You just do a uh, dash past them and then short back air, and then you can land and cover like Amster Tech with forward smash. Um, yeah, yeah. That that edge guard is probably the best one to go for around like a hundred to whenever down tilt kills. Um, before that, you can like they've got like the slide off stuff they can do, which makes it pretty tricky. Um, so just going yeah. for a combo can be good. If they're at like. I don't know, like, let's say, like, 60 to 80%, would you maybe go for, like, a combo um, yeah. extension, like an up tilt or something? Yeah, I think a lot of the time going for the combos, good. You can throw in the occasional, like, back air to catch them DIing away. Um, but, yeah, if, if you try to do the back air edge guard, they just DI up, and then they're close enough where they can, like, jump to stage, and it becomes really hard to edge guard them. Um, whereas if you go for, like, you know, up till and then shine, and then you get a platform tech chases, and then like it can lead to a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It always feels hard to contest Sheik on platforms. Uh, like in this spot where she's shielding, or. Um, just like in general, like whenever mm -hmm. I. I don't know if this is just like a me problem, but. Uh, whenever I used to play Spy, I don't know if you know who he is. Um, no, I don't know Spy. He's a he's one of the good sheiks in Columbus. He's beaten right. Kevin before. Okay. Uh, and he would always beat me on platform. So I like the only time I would ever challenge him on platform is if he would hit me first. Because if I hit him first, he would always just beat me no matter like what I did. Yeah. Um, so I will say there's a lot of. Um like mix-ups you can play on the platforms and they all have like a decent amount of risk um so you can start doing stuff like wave land up to him and then do stuff like shine or up tilt or grab to like beat out his uh, shield drop um getting under him and up airing and up tilting is really good um you can do like rising full hop aerial and land on the top platform with it um you can also try shooting him from the other side of the stage as well but i don't think that's that good um let's see what else on like the lower platforms you can obviously short up bear them through the platform as well which is quite good um you can try going to the top platform and then coming down to the side um which can work too um so so more timing mix-ups yeah timing mix-ups and like you want to like, i don't i don't know what, exactly what this guy's doing on the platform but i'm guessing it's some sort of like waiting for you to hit his shield and then shield drop aerial. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, so to beat that, you just gotta like either not do the aerial in the first place, which me which messes him up, uh, which is why the wave land's good, or like empty landing and then shining, um, or you do aerials that are safe versus the shield drop. So, example, the full hop bear drift to top platform or like up airs. Um, so yeah, I, I think with that you've got there's like some ideas there to deal with it. Yeah. Um, And yeah, you. For that bear. <laughs> yeah, um, I was going to say you also want to again keep in mind percents when you're challenging the platform as well. Like these percents is not too bad because like if either of you gets a hit, it probably leads to a kill. Um, but if say Sheik's at zero and you're at one twenty, I wouldn't be trying to like yeah full hop pair the, the platform. You know, more percent loses the trades usually. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I'd be playing it a lot more cautiously if I was at say this percent but if i'm a zero you know i'm down to wave land on the platform and up tilt and risk getting grabbed but then you know i'm getting grabbed on the platform so it isn't that bad or i'm getting fed and it's not that bad you know mm -hmm. um yeah mango just does a lot of like getting under the platform um which is really good um have you seen the cheek video i posted uh yeah the one with the needles yeah yeah so he's just really good at playing that mix-up right where he either gets under the platform with lasers and then pressures from there, or he like is willing to do stuff like approaching aerial to hit sheet coming off the platform, or he'll like mix up his timing and then laser her coming down. Um, yeah, he does the close range aerial again here. Like, you see how close he is to sheet, and then yeah. he aerials through, and it's just really hard for sheet to deal with. Like he tries to aerial out or wave dash out. Um, high high aerial cross ups are really good. Yeah, and yeah, definitely. I noticed Mango does that in, like, almost every matchup. But more, yeah. like, Marth, Sheik, that kind of thing. Yeah, specifically versus Sheik is really good because um, she doesn't really have... Like, she doesn't have Fox Shine out of shield or stuff like that to hit the back of her shield. Um, like, her 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 back air hits quite high, um, so a lot of the time you, like, avoid her if she tries to back air out of shield. Um, what what's her like fastest option out of shield like Nair? Nair, yeah. So Nair's frame six, or well, not frame six? Mm. Yeah, frame six. Um, so just barely beats out uh, shield grab, or I mean yeah, grab, yeah, um, yeah. So that is one thing sheets can do here is they can try and Nair preemptively, and like at this sort of percent it'll trade with Falco, right? Because he's at sixteen mm. and you're at one two four or whatever. Um, but yeah, if she starts nairing, then like, um, so one thing is if, if she short hop nairs, she, she can't like jump out of her or anything. She has to touch the ground, um, which is important because as soon as you see the nair, it's like a very easy, like, uh, time to recognize that, you know, you've got an advantage and you can go in. Um, can you like crouch it so you get the weak hit? Yeah, you can crouch it. Uh, obviously again, percent dependent, um, Lasering is really good because she's like really big when she nares, right? So it's a very easy target to hit. And then you can do like the moth stuff where you laser nair her. Um, or like bait, or like wait for her to land and then go in and pressure her. Um, and then you can also do stuff like back air and up tilts to beat it as well. Because mm -hmm. those hitboxes just tend to win against it. Oh yeah, that's another one, like full hop shining the platform and then double jumping out is really good versus Sheik as well. Um, for like pressuring the platform. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, um... That could have been arms attacked. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that could have gone wrong. <laughs> I, I'm i still a proponent of doing the like dash through and then back here. Um, but I mean, he did this because I'm guessing because he down tilted the two times before. Blup wouldn't be ready to DI this. Um, but right. I'm, I'm pretty sure you can do the arms attack DI and it's good DI on down tilt as well. Um, 
So this is kind of a gimmick, honestly. Um, Manga's, like, historically not been the best at edgeguarding Sheik. Um, I'm not really can, sure who is the best, but... Can yeah. Sheik, like, hold down during the, the end of her up B? Uh, like, yeah. For her cancel? Okay. Because I was going to say, if she couldn't, then you could, like, do a jab and back air there. Um, but so if she's she, not so, at, like, 1.7 or whatever it is. So she can she can ASDI down, but she can't, crack, like, true crouch cancel. I see. Um, are, are you aware of, like, the differences between ASDI um, down and crouch cancel? Or? A ASDI down is, is, like, when you get hit and you, you're DIing down, so it actually pushes you to the ground. And then CC is uh, it's more like an armor. It's like, but you can only do a true CC at like lower percents. Yeah, basically. And the big difference as well is like you can ASDI down at any time, whereas to crouch cancel, you have to actually be in the crouch like animation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so something like Jab would probably knock her down there because um, Jab knocks down quite late. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's another thing to keep in. That's why people, like, when you try to down air them sometimes, they just get knocked down instead of, like, popped up. It's just because they're holding ASDI down. Um. Do you know about, like, defense versus the down throw as well? Um, um, I know you can get a frame perfect shine, and it's, like, a true escape, right? Uh, what do you mean? Like, you can always shine out of uh, the down through tech chase, can't you? No, you can't always. It's like a, a true tech chase if they if they do it right. But it, um, obviously, teching in place and then shining can make it very hard to react to. Well, I don't mean tech in place. I meant like uh, like tech roll. Yeah, so yeah, she can she can follow like all of your options from down throw. It's just, really? Yeah, it's just hard for her to execute. Um, but it is like a true. Like wobble in a sense, I guess. Um, I, I guess I got that idea because of the um, Uncle Punch training thing, where it's like uh, you have to do a frame perfect shine to escape the. Oh uh, yeah, no. So that's um, that was just put in because it isn't like a true escape, but it makes it a lot harder for Sheik if you're doing frame perfect shine and same for Falcon. Um, so yeah, it's just there to like get you good at acting frame perfect out of um, out of your text. Um, but yeah, so it is a true thing, but, um, there's a couple of things you can do to make it harder. So first of all, you can do a DI that, um, is like, it makes it ambiguous whether you'll land in front or behind her. Um, and it's got, it's got like a uh, platform ambiguous DI, just like on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Or like, you know, when you can do the DI versus moth chain grab where he has to guess which way to turn to grab unless he goes for pivot grab mm -hmm. um it's just uh, it's just another like trick like that um they can do like a specific wave dash to beat it but it's just one of those things that makes it harder um so you can do that which is like up and in slightly um yeah mango isn't making it too ambiguous but you see how he's like mixing up the side which he lands on as well just to make it a bit harder that's, um, yeah, that's interesting. I never really thought about the side I landed on. Like, I, I always thought about, like, you know, making it difficult, like, if I get, like, up-thrown to a platform, not by sheep, but, like, get, yeah, if I get like, up-thrown, and I, uh, you know, like, am I going to fall on the platform, or if, I, or if I'm going to, like, fall on the ground in tech? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's the same with Sheik. Um, and then, outside of that as well, um, pretty much all of her follow-ups that aren't grab uh pretty fraudulent below about 40 percent um so for example if if he tries to dash tag this you can asdi down and tech and then you can like shine her for dash tagging um because a lot of sheiks try to get away with like ending the tech chase early because obviously it's very hard and there's lots of like margin for error so they want to try and get a clean hit to pop you up as soon as possible um mm -hmm. but yeah if they get greedy and start doing it before 40 then you can hold down and tech, and then shine uh, on, like, F-Tilt, on Up Smash, on Dash Attack, like, a lot of the combo starters. Um, up Smash is slightly earlier. It's, like, 30, it stops working. Or what, what other wake-up options would you recommend, usually? Because, like, I feel like if they're good at the tech chase, 
then uh, a lot of times it's really hard to do anything other than like shine or like roll maybe if they're sl they're slightly slow on it. Yeah, so if they're slow, I think um, shine and spot dodge are the two to go for because uh, you know shine's frame one and spot dodge is frame two, so that gives them like the least um, wiggle room. Whereas roll like there's three frames of vulnerability on it, so most tech chasers can like get it if they're three frames slow you know um mm -hmm. what does end up happening sometimes is the tech chasers to say the sheik or the falcon knows they're slow and then they make it look like they're gonna go for tech chase and then they do something else so like i'm sure you've seen falcon do the thing where he runs forward and then he jumps in place and needs your like spot dodge or shine yeah um yeah so when when you get a feel for when they're going to be late. That's when you can start throwing in like rolls or dash back or wake up up tilt stuff like that. Um, but if you know they're going to go for the grab, then shine and spot dodge are the two to go for. Um, sometimes they can space around shine, so that's when spot dodge can be good. Um, and also spot dodge is bufferable, right? So it's easier to time. Right. Um, so hey, yeah. wait, if they if they go for like a read too is it like the same concept of like oh now i can like uh probably do an option that takes a little bit more frames um well if they if they if they read your tech correctly then they should just be getting the hit anyway and if they read say say they read you going to the left and you go to the right that's when you can just start doing your other options like normal like you don't need to do the the spot dodge or whatever because they're on the other side of the stage right yeah, I, um, I find that I like a lot of Falcos, including myself, uh just do like, it anyway. Yeah, we just do it anyway. <laughs> it's just in yeah. our blood. <laughs> yeah, you just gotta be a bit more present and aware and like looking at the screen. And especially like, because there's nothing else you could be doing anyway either. So you may as well put all of your focus into like watching their character and seeing if they messed up and seeing like if they're gonna be slow or if they're gonna make it in time and then changing your decision based on that. Um,. But yeah, I think that's some good things to think about when you're getting down thrown. Because a lot of the time it can feel like there's no sort of interaction. Um, right. But like in realistic melee, there, there is. <laughs> realistic melee. <laughs> well, <like that. laughs> well, if we're playing a task, then yeah, you just put the controller down, right? But, <laughs> you know, we're playing at Summit where Flip gets three grabs and then Mango second place shines him. <laughs> yes, yeah, so like he missed it there. So this is a great example, actually. Yeah. So Mango really? does the tech roll and sees that Plup does the dash dance, which means he's slow. So then he knows he can dash away and get dash dance down there, and then he reversals. That's so much presence, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it gets easier with time, though. Yeah, it's, it's again just one of those things that becomes like unconscious competence. Um, once you start getting to the higher percents, uh, say about 70 onwards, um, if you do DI in, she can up tilt you, or forward tilt, or down smash. So you want to DI away at these like seventy percent onwards or so. Mm. <laughs> Double needle cancel fair. I feel like that F smash never works. <laughs> <laughs> like you see, uh, like for like. Unless they like get up attack, like that's the only time I feel like it actually works. Yeah, you you can't react. Well, as far as I'm aware, you can't react to regular get up with um forward smash. You have to down smash instead, or shine, or up tilt, or whatever. Um, just because the frames don't add up. Um, I will say though, Mango does something really cool here where he takes the nair, and then just goes over and hits him anyway. <laughs> um, that's really important because a lot of sheiks do like bad nairs out of shield, like. They're told narrow out of shields are a really good option, so then they just spam it regardless of like the percents or the context. So then you can get a lot of free hits on Sheik. Like Mango literally kills him here. Um, mm. So yeah, just not letting them get away with free stuff like that is important. Yeah, you see how like this time when Plip's on the platform, he just plays it a lot more conservative, like to shoot some lasers, dash dances longer. And then he actually ends up waiting for Plup to come down instead. Which, you know, when you think of Mango, you don't think of this as something you would do, right? 
Right. He, um, but, you know, sometimes he does throw it in there. Um, His timing mix-ups are so, like, like tiny but, like, subtle that I think a lot of people just mistake them for, like, the same timing of, like, going in all the time. Yeah. That was really nice. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so this is one of the classic Mango Edge cards that I don't like and Ginger doesn't like. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like this downer pretty much never works to hit Sheik back off stage, especially if they do like because nowadays people like smash GI in and stuff like that. Um, so this is another one where we're just going for like a rinse repeat back air, or you could risk it and go for like a up tilt into a combo. Um, are both like better options, I think. Yeah, uh, I know it hasn't come up yet, but uh, what do you think of like down air, down air, like uh, like you down yeah. air through them and then they go off stage? Yeah, I think like, that's a really good mix up for back air, like same as versus Sheik, right? Uh, yeah, uh, not but versus like, Sheik versus Moth. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, but like, is that like better if they're not at like down tilt kill percent? You think? Like um, as a mix up for. So. I think that's the majority of Sheiks, you can get away with mixing up downer, downer, and back air um, below down tilt kill percent. Um, but the higher level Sheiks have started um, sliding off and then fast falling to ledge, which beats that mix up pretty much. Because um, it just covers both back air and downer. Um, so I'd say there's the majority of people, yeah, that's good to go for. Uh, but you, you might play some people where they do this slide off fast fall and then you have to go for more of the like get up and then shine and combo them or get up and then up tilt um stuff like that um right. i hope that makes sense no it does i just that's a lot i'm just trying yeah to no that's fine <laughs> um it's, it's hard to give an example as well because not many people do it at the moment um but i don't want to say to you like yeah this will work and then you play some guy that's specifically good at slide off stuff and then you're like oh why can't i edge cut this guy <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah yeah this is also a pretty good edge guard too sometimes uh, if they're far away and they can't hit you with the upbeat you can actually just hold the ledge and mm. then wait for where they go um ideally mango would want to hit him back off to the left because he could have hands attacked um, but but yeah, it's still like a, a good edge guard you can go for in some situations as well. Uh, this is pretty important actually. Um, so this dash attack, you know, where she kind of crosses up your shield. Mm -hmm. um, you can actually um, jump out of shield and then do a late aerial to punish this. It's kind of a tight yeah, timing. Bet, like a backflip dare? Uh, yeah, I think you can get it with dare. The main one I do it with is back air, just because it's easier. Um, and because Sheik's at 49, it's pretty, you know, it knocks her down, which is nice. Um, but yeah, it's actually like, Wave Dash Shine doesn't work here, which is, you know, usually the go-to for Falco. Um, but yeah, on, on this like weird cross, you have to be quite quick and you have to backflip and then back area a lot of what happens here is um falco tries to do the wave dash shine or he tries to do something else out of shield and then she just comes back in with a grab or another dash tech because he knows falco won't hit her um so yeah that might just be something that comes up when you play against Sheik. Mm -hmm. that's a really nice combo Did that down smash it before uh, Pluff hit the ground? No. <laughs> Which is why it was no. kind of sus, but um, yeah, you see the close range um, down at here as well, again. Use laser. Yeah. Same and then he gets weak down Yeah. And then he gets weak down up so which is nice. <laughs> but yeah, I know it, he didn't because uh, he jumps right, so he must have hit the ground. I think it would have been tricky to arms attack or something there, because he was kind of high up. But <laughs> I remember That's this so combo. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Oh, I think you can see it. Oh wait, no, I think it's it's not that you can't wave dash shine. I think it was that it's like frame perfect to go for. Uh, and I don't know if she was buffering shield here either. So that also makes it kind of um, wonky. Mango has been doing a uh, like if he does this wave dash out of uh, shield shine, sometimes he'll just do a shine turner on grab. Like he did that versus yeah. uh, Zane recently on stream. Yeah, it's just good if he thinks he might be late. Um, but yeah, this one was just all insane execution. Um, and yeah, I think... Yeah, so I think she goes out of hit stun, but sometimes a lot of combos, like, it doesn't matter if they're out of hit stun, because jumping's also awful for Sheik here, right? Um, so he would have to, like, drift back or fast fall to avoid this, which puts her in a pretty bad position. Um, yeah, it's really hard to recover. Yeah, so sometimes going for these, like, combo routes where you abuse the fact that they don't want to, um, you know, jump or anything like that is really good. And yeah, you get to kill at, like, 20. <laughs> so, it's pretty good. Um, right, we can watch a bit of uh, Santi vs. Sheik as well. Yay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I wanted to try and pick one where the Sheik is, like, the worst player. Um, just because then it's a bit easier to see when he's like abusing the, the matchup, right? Mm -hmm. They start with Fountain, which I don't know whether. Do you want to watch Fountain? That's, that's, or... a, that's a Santi pick. Um, <laughs> it's up to you. What um, other stages are there? Yoshi's. Yoshi's Fountain, Battlefield, Dreamland. We just mm. watched two Battlefields, so I think either a smaller. I think a smaller stage is fine. Yeah, we can do uh, one of the Yoshi games. <sighs> he plays Falcon, fuck's sake, right? Let me look for one where he uh, <laughs> he doesn't play Falcon on Yoshi's. I didn't even know Santi played a... Uh... Yeah, I didn't either. Uh... So... <laughs> Just watch this random set. No, it's a double, <laughs> double battlefield. God damn it. I mean, it might be worth watching anyway, because it's only a short set as well. But yeah, I think it is important not to only watch, like, you know, Mango Plup or whatever. Um, Santi's gonna... Santi could be a top 10 player one day. <laughs> yeah, he's so good. He just uh, doesn't go to... Doesn't put the time in it. <laughs> yeah, you see, immediately he does the same thing as Mango, right? Where he takes the Nair and then hits Sheik. Which is really mm -hmm. good. Yeah, you see that up air as well, he does up air fast fall and then shield, which gets around if she yeah. wants to like shield drop fair. That was nuts. Yeah. Oh, this is a classic one as well. Sheik's love to pressure the corner with this like drift in there. Um, Cause it, like it beats if Falco shoots the laser right, unless it's super high laser. Um, and even then, it can sometimes just stuff you in your startup. So Santi goes for a dash up shield as well, which is what Mango does as well. And then you get to shine out shield on the Nair, or you can grab it or up smash as well. Yeah, uh, I think shielding in the corner is kind of underrated because a lot of people just hold shield and they don't like react at all. Yeah, so they, think, they, they think it's bad because they just get grabbed or whatever. But I think it's good if you um, if you're ready for it. Yeah, especially because Sheik's are pretty scared to grab as well when you're in the corner because they, they don't want to get like spot that shined. They don't want to give up the corner and then you get to roll through them. Um, and yeah, it's just like a pretty off-meta thing, I'd say, for Sheik's at the moment. Like, a lot of them, like, this sort of pressure rate is like fair F-tilt, right? Um, yeah. So yeah, I think Alden Shield's really good in the corner. Yeah, you see how he plays at that spacing again? Space around the mm -hmm. F tilt. He messes up slightly, but um But again he does the down arrow like crosses up shield and she can't really do much other than you know just play the next interaction. Yeah, so he gets a center back. Yeah, so just playing at that this sort of spacing is just really strong this Sheik. Where you're like just outside of her F tilt range. Um and a lot of the time if she tries to dash tag you can like jump over it and stuff as well. Um. Yeah, I definitely think the the two worst parts about 
both their games against Cheek as their edge guards. Um, which makes sense, because like, like we were saying uh, in the DMs, right, like, like they're both pretty old school players, so they're not the type to have like labbed out all of the edge guards and stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it might be worth like watching. I think West is pretty good at edge guarding Sheik. That's where I got a lot of my ideas from. Um, Do you have any sets in particular? Um, of West edge guarding? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure really, but he was the first to do stuff like shine wave landing them when they go to the platform and then doing like big combos off of that or doing like the, the delayed bear stuff as well. Um, yeah, I'm trying to do think, think what sets I watch. Do you think reading going to platform is a good idea sometimes? Uh, like you... if you, if they, if you know they're going to go to platform cause that's like their favorite thing. Uh, a lot of the time I feel like you don't really get a bigger punish if you read them going there as opposed to just reacting to them going there. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of a situation where like you could read them going to the platform. Because the thing is, a lot of the time you just, you're on ledge, you do the regular getup and then you just sort of see where they go. And if they mm -hmm. go to the platform, you get... Uh, Shine's probably the the safest thing you can do. You can do like instant double jump down air if you think they won't slide off, and then you can get like a combo off of that, uh, or you can go for the back air as well. Um, but yeah, what what would you be like reading the platform with? I guess is my. Well, I the the reason I had that idea was because I I saw Zane do um, the, he was playing the Sheik, and it might have just been because he was playing Roy and he didn't want to like. He had to like commit to something to get a good yeah. kill, but he like he went to the he went to the platform and he read that uh like he like was a uh, refreshing on the ledge and then as soon as he saw the sheik up B because I think that's like when most sheiks make their decision of where they're gonna up B yeah uh, he like instantly uh went to the platform and charged an F smash yeah I I can see that working on maybe some of the smaller platforms like um, Bassfield or Yoshi's. I can see it yeah, working. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just trying to think. Hmm. I think there's probably certain percents where it can be good. Like when the F smash will will kill, I think it can be worth going for. Um, but if it's at say like sixty, I don't think you're going to get the kill anyway. So then it's better to just go for the the flow chart. Um, really? And then after you get to like. 120, 130 or whatever, you just can kill him a lot of the time regardless of where he goes because of down tilt, back air, stuff like that. Um, so I think there's like certain... If it's that sweet spot of like... Um, your other options don't kill, then I think it can be good. So like around 80% maybe if you're charging F-Smash. Obviously it depends on the stage and like the DI and stuff and which hitbox, but... Um, right. Yeah, I think it can be good sometimes. But yeah, the only, like, disadvantage of it is it starts giving up, like, ledge to Sheik, which is, like, obviously really strong for her. Um... I like the sun uses Shine Grab as well. Shine Grab's like a really good this week. So it beats um, like her Narrow Shield, which is obviously like a high priority option to beat. Uh, and also just because of her weight and stuff, it's easy to combo off of it if the Shine whiffs as well. Uh, if the Shine hits, sorry. How many frames of hit lag does uh, Shine do on Shield? Um, I'm not sure, but I could tell you like all of the interactions where it like wins or loses. Well, I was just thinking, as you said, Shine Grab beats the, the Nera Shield. Yeah. Because, like, it obviously gives it at least one frame of hit lag, but, like, uh, I was just trying to think of, like, calculating that whenever I'm thinking about, like, frame advantage and shield pressure. Okay, so the way... Um, the way I think of it is just, like... Um, I know Shine Grab beats Nera Shield, and I know... Narav Shield is frame 6, so therefore I can, like, think of all these other options that it beats, if that makes sense. Um, uh, kinda. <laughs> so, like, because I know Shine... 
Because I know Shine Grab beats Sheik Narav Shield that's frame 6. I know there will also be Falco Shine Grab Shield because that's also frame 6. Oh, I see what you're saying. You can have, like, compare them. Yeah, and so I know if any character grabs, then Shine Grab's going to be it because they're frame 7. But then if Fox shines out shield, that's frame 4, so then Shine Grab's going to lose. Um, so I don't really know, like, the, the hit lag and the maths behind it. I just sort of know, like, the RPS of what beats what, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's probably easier to think about than trying to do the math mid-game. Yeah, I wonder if... Honestly, Flash would be the person to <laughs> to ask yeah, about, about that sort of thing. <laughs> Can you tell that I talk so much? <laughs> but, but yeah, like, I, I just... I think it's easier as well if you just sort of intuitively know that, like, Shine Grab beats quick options, but not, like, really quick options. Like, it's not going to beat Roll, it's not going to beat Spot Dodge, it's not going to beat Fox Shine, but it will beat some of the quicker options, like Falco Shine, uh, Sheik Nair, um, Martha B. Um, so what do you think is, like, the best thing to mix up with uh, Shine Grab? Like, Double Shine? Double Shine can be good, yeah. So... So the way I'd like to think about this is what beats the shine grab, right? So we said roll, spot dodge, and well, for Sheik, they're the only two she can do. Um, so yeah, Fox, shine out shield. Yeah, so it's a bit different versus Fox because because of, of shine out shield, but um, versus Sheik, um, shine and then wave dash in the direction you think she'll roll is really good. Um, that's like your biggest punish for rolling, and again, you can multi shine like you say as well, uh, and that can catch it, but. Um, I did test this a while ago, and it only covers one of her rolls. I think it covers roll in, but it doesn't cover roll away from you. Um, Wait, I'm sorry, what what doesn't cover that? So, because multi-shine, or because shine's hitbox is really small, if she rolls away from you, she moves her hurtbox so that the shine oh, doesn't hit. I, yeah, I see what you're saying. Like, you catch, like if, she, if she rolls in, then you catch her as she's rolling into you with the, the yeah. second shine. So, okay. like, even though the numbers add up, they don't match up with, like, the hurt boxes and stuff like that. Um, that makes sense, yeah. And then for spot dodge, like, you can just do any <laughs> any of your other options on shield, like shine fadeaway aerial, um, shine light aerial, shine laser, you know, all that good stuff. Um, but, yeah, so a good, like, standard versus Sheik is just to spam shine grab and then wait for them to start rolling uh, or spot dodging. Now that you mention it, shine, um, shine laser uh, sounds a lot better than double shine in most situations. Because if they roll in, then you could probably just react with a shine, and if they go away, you get a laser on them. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I think shine laser is really good, especially versus uh, Falcon and Puff as well. I think it's really good. Yeah, I love doing it versus. <laughs> I, I've been experimenting with them, um, like my. Uh, like doing laser out of shield pressure situations and it's been doing a lot of uh, wonders especially versus the people i'm playing at this level that constantly roll out yeah i think there's definitely like you can get a lot of mileage out of it um but yeah so i think the sheet just like shine grab should be a go-to and then you sort of build up from there <laughs> nice <laughs> tomahawk into torpedo Yeah, also the, the top Falcons are really good at sort of keeping Sheik in the air as well and in disadvantage. So you see how here he like gets under Sheik and then he up tilts and then he gets under Sheik again. Um, and then like all of this time he was like trying to stay on the top platform and stop her from, you know, coming down very easily. Um, yeah, do you, do you think that's why he went for the second shine in that first uh, part of the combo? Yeah, definitely. Because yeah. the shine, like, just getting under and then shining can end up, like, sneaking under a lot of her aerials. Uh, and again, it, like, pushes her back into the air into another bad situation. So being on the yeah. ground and up tilting or shining is really good. And then back air is also nice because it sends her, like, up and away. Yeah, I think um, I think playing quite vertically at low percent could be good as well, like when you're in the corner. So like, here he just gets fed, but then he just lands on the platform anyway, so he's not really in danger. Hmm. Um, this is another big thing as well, is like, um, 
figuring out when Sheik likes to jump and then nairing her for it. Uh, that's like one of the main openings you get with early aerials versus Sheik is you hit her out of her jump startup because she wants to jump and like set up her fair like pressure, right? Um, right. Kind of like a, if you read a Falco going for a laser. Yeah, exactly. Same same sort of thing. It's like the same spacing for it as well. Um, but yeah, so if I play jumpy Sheiks, like that's the, the spot I like to really set up because then I can, you know, nair them if they try to jump. Yeah, this is a pretty uh, common situation that happens as well. If you're like too far away from Sheik, then a lot of the time she can dash and then jump away. And then she like puts you in the corner. Um, I don't know if this mm. has happened to you. Yeah, but they usually don't uh, take full advantage of it. Yeah, like this, I don't think this guy did really here. Um, but yeah, like a better Sheik would probably get to the platform and then like she'll drop back at you or something like that. Um, so what you can start doing is instead of trying to like nair into the corner to hit her, is you can like short hop double jump and then down her down her going up here, or you can do like full hop shine. Um, yeah, re read the jump. Do you think high laser would be good too? Or yeah, yeah, high laser can catch her jumping as well. Um, yeah, it's just people sort of get into this autopilot of just chasing her down with an aerial when she can when she has time to like move out of the way of it. Um, it happens a lot with falcon as well like they'll be in some pressure they'll roll away or something and then they'll jump double jump before you can get to them with the aerial because falco is quite slow um so that's when you need to make more like level two reads of like you know reading them going to the platform or lasering them out of their jump like you say mm. um yeah the same down air it's just like really hard for sheet to deal with you edge guard Probably should have just rolled up there. Um, this is a tricky one, I think. Let me watch it again. I think he could have delayed his get up a bit longer. But yeah, you can roll up as like a call out as well. Um, Actually, aren't you supposed to like, in case she goes up, like straight up with the poof, aren't you supposed to just ray or get up and then like uh, down smash on reaction? Yeah, yes, that's what I'm saying. I think he missed time the regular get up. But I also think that she did a pretty good timing on the up B. There's sometimes when, like, in some positions where the regular get up edge guard, like, doesn't work. Um, this might have been one of them. It's pretty tricky to tell. Um, but yeah, it's just mainly because Santi grabbed the edge quite early and then had to refresh. Um, but I think he could have just stayed on there a little bit longer. And then this would have worked. All of the baits. Yeah, you see how that guy goes for the nair again in the corner? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just like... Um, funnily enough, it's pretty similar to what we were saying before about Falco doing this like nair that's pretty um, like autopilot. Like, Sheik's love to do it too. Where they just see you roll into the corner and then they just nair at you. Again. Oh my god. <laughs> Get up attack. Yeah, so again, like, shines Sheik and then stays above her. Like, he does short up lasers instead of trying to, like, you know, double jump laser or something like that. cheesed yeah that's unfortunate <laughs> i hate when the air dodge doesn't get you like on stage yeah oh he messed up his combo what do you think he would have went for there um i don't think up air would have hit unless he was a bit closer i think this is all fine he just messed up his jump he should have done dash and then full hop like see how he just full hops in place oh uh, yeah yeah yeah, so it was actually good recognition of him to forward air after he saw he messed up the combo. But yeah, he should have just dash full hop and then back air probably. Or dash full hop double jump air. You don't think Nair would have killed? Or not killed, but like set him further? Yeah, either one's fine. Um, they have pretty similar like 
properties. Yeah, so he does it this time and it works. So yeah, I think it was just a timing thing before that made mm -hmm. it tricky. Yeah, this is another thing that's quite good for Sheik as well. It's like grabbing her when she gets out of the combo. Just because they love shielding and then trying to grab you out of it. Or um, or like Nair or something. So just continuing your pressure sequences with grab is really nice. Yeah, I've been, I've been getting better at uh, chasing my opponents down in general. Mm -hmm. That's good. <laughs> Torpedoed. Right. Um, yeah, I can watch. I'm trying to think if, if the set I have with over, there's some good edge guards in. Because I think that's the one thing that we haven't really. Uh, like, we've just seen Mango and Santi go for some weird <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah. so. I think I've actually watched some of your sets with, uh, versus him. I've played a lot of us over Triforce. It might be the person I've played against most, like in. or one of the people I've played against most in Europe. Uh, I'm trying to think which game. I think I play really well this game. Game one's a complete mess. <laughs> so not watching that. Um. Yeah, do you see like how ambiguous this was to him? Like, yeah. wh which side am I going to land on here? <laughs> you yeah, know, it's, it's like pretty tricky. <laughs> And then you see how I hold down as well, so that um, like I can attack this one. But um, yeah, it just stops me from getting popped up, which makes the combo a lot harder. <laughs> yeah, I'm only <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That uh, Nair that over Triforce did, is that guaranteed on side B if he's uh, times are it? Yeah, but I um, I spaced my side B really well. It might have even been a sweet spot. Um, like, you see how so low I did it? Yeah, it's yeah. really hard. I can't believe I went for this. But um, yeah, if he delayed the Nair and did it a bit later, I think it would have worked. But then he's prone to getting high side B, I I think. So there's a little bit of a mix up there. Um, Yeah, this is a classic situation that comes up actually on the edge guard as well. They double jump close to the ledge. Um, and then the mix-up here should be that Sheik either just keeps falling uh, to try and grab the ledge from you if, she, if you get off of it, or she does this air dodge and then you have to read her doing it and then like go up and hit her. Um, but a lot, pretty much every Sheik I've played anyway just always goes for the air dodge in this position. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, you can just jump up and back at her. Oh, I nearly messed up. Yeah, I just go for the... I see where she goes and then cross her up with the back air. I hate when Cheeks get a free F tilt off the <laughs> off of hitting you, like, off your shield on platform. Yeah. It's like, you didn't earn that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you see how, like, the opening, I guess, quite... Uh, like, it was a... The dare hit pretty late, so it was like a good opening for me. And then I mm -hmm. shine grab in case I was late, or in case the down air didn't work. Um, and then I just shine to second place on a read. Um, and then I'm always trying to like push him out and off stage, um, so then I can like set up for corner pressure or a, a kill. I, I think, think... Uh, fair is so underrated, like yeah, for sense because like. If you if they start reading that you're gonna do the fair and they start diing out, then you can just start daring them and then like getting yeah. the kills really early. Yeah, especially on on Sheik and Moth, it links really well as well. Probably the best on Sheik, honestly. Like this, I got like twenty damage off fair, I think. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> and then yeah, he's he's a fifty three, and then if I back air him, he's like off stage. Um, yeah, you see I do the the narrow that spacing as well that like catches the jump and it crosses up, so it's yep. hard for it to deal with. Uh, so I was over 100. We didn't actually talk about this either. So when you're over 100, uh, a lot of the time you have to do the get up a lot earlier. Um, 
or you just have to make a read so so like you were saying going to the platform might have been a good choice here for me right um because i can't go for this like flow charge guard but if i'd have just jumped up yeah. there and charge forward smash like that could have been better for me um i have a question so if you know that you're at over 100 and you have to do that timing earlier how or like when do you decide when to do it because like it's a lot easier to time it whenever you don't have the yeah so it's a read i'm pretty sure um you want to do it when you think she will start her at B. Whereas with the regular get up edge guard, you do it as she poofs, right? Um, right? So I think it's roughly when you think she'll start her at B. I'm not sure if you can react to her starting it. I just do it on a read usually. Um, it's just a lot harder to edge guard cheat once you're above 100, basically. So you just have to accept that you need to make more, more like reads. It seems like he, he was going to go to the platform high percent anyway. Like that, yeah. I feel like that's one of his mix-ups is when you're at high percent and he likes to go to the platform. Yeah, platform's just hard for Taco to deal with. Um, same with Fox. Let's see if there's another edge guard. Yeah, so like there I tried to call him out and move into the platform as well. So like I shoot the laser and then I full up full hop up there preemptively in case he went up there and then he probably would have died if um if he did go up there. So just stuff like that, you can kind of like contest them before they even get to the platform. Um which is like another like another way of dealing with them on the platform is just not letting them get there, right? Um, yeah. I think too much I try to like pun it like with punish after. Yeah. But, um, I think I think mixing it up with uh hitting them before is really important too. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you see here, like, like I said about Sansi, I kind of like get the decent combo here and then I grab out of it cause I know Sheik wants to shield and then he tries to grab me. Um, you get the kill for it. Yeah. Like he tries to shield grab here, which is kind of greedy. Um, and then, yeah, that was another one where like, I knew he doesn't want to jump here. So I just go for the down air and like, if it trades, that's still a kill for me. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, just abusing the fact that they don't want to jump as well is really good. Um, oh yeah, rolling back's really strong versus Sheik as well and wave dash back. Just because it forces them, like he has to do fair and then like boost grab me or dash attack, which is like really risky for him. Because I could start, you know, spot dodge shining or just aerialing out of shield. Um, mm. So you'll see Mango do it a lot as well where he just like moves back and sort of retreats um, when Sheik's on his shield. He doesn't always try to, like, fight out of it. Uh, slide off on the platform as well was important here. So you see how I DI it so that he can't get a follow-up. Can you only do that if you miss the tech, the slide off? No, you can do it on tech in place as well. It's just harder because you don't have um, as much momentum. Yeah. But, yeah, you can go for the tech in place here as well. Yeah. to be cool almost looks like mango <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is another one where like i read his high up b and just threw out the attack um yeah so just as a general rule like if you think they want to try and recover deep into the stage uh then just throwing out preemptive attacks is really good to try and stuff them yeah um, how much yeah. have you uh used that uh that get up attack, the one where he like kicks his feet up or whatever. Uh, that was just a bit of improvisation for me, honestly. Um, That's because uh, old school players used to do that a ton. I remember when I was like really young <laughs> and I played, we used to always do that uh, to cover like uh, people coming up on stage. Yeah, I think it was either I did the back air too early and then I miss input, or I did the get up attack because I wanted to reverse hit, which I did fortunately end up doing here. Um, but yeah, if you are late and you see them do this air dodge and you decide not to get off ledge, never do the regular getup anyway, because they always like down smash you. Uh, you want to just roll or stay on the ledge or just do something that isn't um, regular getup. Yeah, I'll leave you right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, okay. So I think we got a decent amount of stuff. Uh, oh, this is yeah. just the notes from last lesson. How, how did yeah. you find the stuff from last lesson, by the way? We didn't really talk um, about that. I I was uh I've been spending like the past like you know since the last lesson 
uh, applying a lot of that advice, not only to the Fox matchup, but just like, um, like the the laser spacing thing was really big for me. Um, and then the last one, adapting to situations. Yeah. Uh, I, I I wasn't. I've I've been doing a lot of, uh, just like playing people and like trying to actively play more and just yeah. be more present because I feel like one of the biggest issues with CRT, like just solo practice in general, is that I don't always keep my presence of mind. Yeah. Because I'm not, you know, I'm not like in the moment. I'm not playing anybody. I'm not like trying to kill them or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I get you. I get you. Um, yeah. Especially with matchmaking now as well. I think that's a lot easier to do than it was before. Um, which is a nice, like, benefit. Um, yeah, I, I have one mentality question. Like, that's, yeah, that sure. should be it. Uh, just, like, how do you deal with, like, if you're having, like, uh, like, stress or, like, anything, like, outside of the game, like, do you just try to, like, deal with it? Or, like, if you can't really deal with it, do you just, like... Uh, I've been re- rereading The Art of Learning, and, like, one of the things he does, he talks about is, like, he would go on vacation and stuff. And, like... yeah try to get his head out away from it but like i don't like to i don't like to just ignore like my problems a lot yeah of times. um yes i i get this sometimes so um a lot of the tournaments i entered these like net play ones i do like a full shift at work uh and sometimes i'd have like deadlines to hit and stuff like that um so it did definitely affect my play um so i've been trying to do now is like take it on a day by day basis and like if i have had a really stressful day sometimes i'll like adjust the amount of melee stuff i do like yesterday i just played for like half an hour or something and then called it because it was like a pretty bad day at work but then there's some days where you know it goes really well and then you know i'm playing for like four hours or whatever um, that happened yesterday to me I, <laughs> so, I, I only played a little bit yesterday because i was like i can't i'm just not in the right headspace yeah, so I think, like, adjusting your expectations to how your day's going or, like, certain changes in lifestyle and stuff. Like, say you've just quit caffeine or something like that. Like, you shouldn't expect yourself to be able to play the same amount, you know, or, like, put as much energy into it. Um, mm-hmm. And then... Yeah, just, like, I mean, you can you can use the concepts from... Uh, Man's Game of Poker for like real life stuff as well um, which I think is a pretty underrated fact about the, the book and, and just like mindset in general for for competing like a lot of it applies to real life situations too um, Do you have any like specific things from the book that you really like to use in real life? Because like I, I, I can understand like how a lot of them like kind of like overlay mm. but um like which ones do you like i've been using like inject logic a lot yeah. in my real life but like i i find that you know the things that stress me out are usually like the fact that i don't really like working like yeah not, like, a, shitty, a <laughs> shitty job and it's like you know like i i just no matter like i've always been like this no matter it once i get to like the six to eight month mark at a, at a job it's just like i start realizing i'm i'm, I'm just more of a tool and so yeah like, yeah I'm, exactly like an asset and like I just get really stressed out. I'm at I'm kind of like at that point now. Like I almost walked out of my job the other day because it was just it's so stressful. Yeah. And I just I I barely got through it to be honest. Yeah, no, I I definitely can feel that. Um, yeah, I think the one I use mainly is just the the stuff it says about writing and venting and like how productively venting is like one of the best ways to deal with that stuff. Um, just because it, it just, like, takes it out of your head and puts it onto paper. So then, A, it's easier to, like, sift through your thoughts. Um, and it, I think it says in it about, like, sometimes you write something down and you say it aloud and you realize, like, how stupid it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, yeah, yeah also... Or whatever. I don't know how to say that word. The Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get what you mean. Um but yeah, and then the other thing is, like, it takes it out of your head, so then you have more space to think about stuff you want to think about, like melee or whatever. Um, so, yeah, I'd say the the productively venting and just, like, writing down any sort of negative sort of thoughts you're having, I think, is really useful. Um, I've been trying out meditation recently, um, but I've not got any, like, proof about whether it's worked for me or not yet, so I don't really want to, you know... Yeah, well, I've, I've I've done meditation before, um, mm. 
and like my i think it's really good if you do it like because it takes time to be able to like learn how to let shit go yeah but like my problem isn't like letting it go it's it's that it just it gets built up to a point where i can't stop it yeah and i have to try to like preemptively stop it but it's really hard when you're just in an environment like the my work environment is very stressful because yeah. like we're understaffed all the time and uh you know, like I try to take steps at work. You know, I try to teach people how to do stuff and stuff. But it's it's like a, one of my coworkers described it perfectly. It's like Groundhog Day. It's like the same shit <laughs> every yeah. day, and it just like repeats. Yeah. And I, like, I only work four days a week right now, but yeah. like, like that was my good balance. Like that was working out the first like five six months. Mm-hmm. But even now, I feel like I don't even want to work that much. Like yeah. I thought it was Friday yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um... No, it definitely sounds like writing stuff out more would help you. Because, again, it just helps you... Um, what does the book call it? Uh, not, like, reduce tilt, but... Um, like, control it before it gets too far, basically. And I think writing stuff out, again, sort of gets it out of your head. And then, you know, you, like, lower the meter that's in your head of stress, right? Um, mm-hmm. Well, that's how I, like, think about it anyway. Um, but, yeah, I think... That's my thoughts on it anyway. Um, Thanks, man. Yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, so I need to <laughs> I need to do your notes and I need to do uh, Carl's notes as well. So I'll try and oh. get those up today. When's that uh the the new ones uh the new students lessons coming out? Because uh, I I want to watch them. <laughs> oh, uh, I can put that up today as well. I'll try and get all three of these up tonight. Yeah, no I think rush. It's probably the best way. Um, yeah, it's just if I don't do it now, then I end up, like, procrastinating, and then, you know, oh, it's I not good. It. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, I'll try and get that done tonight. Um, yeah. But, yeah, okay, I think if that's it, then... That's all I have. Good. All right, sick. Well, I'll speak to you later then, dude. See ya.